Well, sheesh, it looks like Elon's compensation package is pretty much passed based on some of the numbers that are coming out, some of the estimations, guesstimations, some of the calculations that are coming from X. So it's a sheesh moment. We're going to get down with it, obviously, guys. I'm 110% certain that Elon's compensation is going to be passed. And I am on the fence when it comes to Delaware, but I am predicting that's going to be passed as well. So we're going to get the Delaware removal from Delaware to Texas passed, in my opinion, and the compensation passed also in my opinion. So I think both are going to be passed. Now, the Texas thing is a whole lot harder to calculate because it's it, you need the entire shareholders to vote on that. But for the compensation for Elon, that one is a whole lot easier to, you know, guess and come up with numbers and, you know, calculate that. It's a whole lot easier to calculate that. So I want to be very clear. This is my opinion. And based on some of the calculation that's going on, it looks like it's been passed. And I am very certain that Elon's compensation has already been patched passed unofficially we'll know that in two days when you guys join my live session it's gonna be a, a wicked session but anyways i want to show you guys i want to show you guys how the breakdown works and why i think it's already been passed so smash that like button hit subscribe if you haven't already let's get down to it so the calculation that i made was extremely napkin mathy if that makes any sense and i put it on x and if you guys aren't following me on x i don't know what you guys are doing man it's a fun time there but what i wrote here was wait a minute Intuitions, bruh, bruh, it's supposed to be institutions. I gotta, you know, reread what I write sometimes, but nonetheless, institutions that voted for Elon's comp package. Baron Capital, which owns about 0.6% of total shares, they've confirmed. ARK Invest, 0.13%. BlackRock, 5.9% confirmed, which is insane. Now, here's the thing. They didn't, BlackRock didn't come out and say that, yeah, we're voting for Elon. The biggest indicator here was Elon following the CFO of BlackRock recently. That pretty much shows you that, hey, man, they they went with it. They went for the, you know, Elon's Cup of Shit and Package. And they also did it back in 2018. So this is pretty much a guarantee that they did. So I added here as confirmed, which is 5.9%. That's going to help us a lot. T row 0.69%. They haven't decided, but they have strong support. I added onto it as well. Bailey Gifford owns about 0.5% of Tesla stock, which just yesterday they came and they confirmed that they went for it. So this gets added on. And by the way, guys, these percentages here are based on the total outstanding shares of Tesla. So it's not how much they own in their own portfolio, it's how much of actual Tesla outstanding shares they own. So that's a total of 7.88% or 251 million shares voted. I'm sure there's other institutions that did vote for Elon's compensation package, but didn't voice it. So I'm sure it's more, and I'm talking about double, even triple more than what this is. I mean, just today, Altimeter Capital came out and they said they're voting for Elon. So that's going to add on to it as well. Now, that's just institutions, right? People who have confirmed, I'm sure more are coming out right now are saying it. And majority of them are not going to voice it out. But we do know a good chunk of them are going to say yes for the compensation package. Because, I mean, why own the stock and not vote for such a thing that, you know, it's just ridiculous. Only the ones that are stupid and just ridiculous are coming out and saying they're going to vote against it. Majority of them are not voicing it, but they're actually voting for it. Keep that in mind. There are around 46% of retail investors that hold Tesla stock out of the 3.186 billion shares outstanding. Let's say only 70% of the 46% got to vote. Now, I know it's probably even lower than that to 50%. But guys, the mobilization to vote for this comp package is unprecedented. So seeing 70%, I wouldn't be surprised. And of that, Elon said 90% of voters who vote are in favor. So that's about 29% or just below 1 billion shares of voted. If we add 251 million to 923 million, that's almost 1.2 billion voted shares. Around 13% they cannot vote because of Elon and Kimball shares. They can't vote for their own thing, obviously. Therefore, only 2.770 shares can vote. If we divide by these numbers, we get 42.4%. But Pidgey, man, you said it was passed and your own number says it's not passed, man. What is this information, man? The reason why I'm saying this is a pass is because, well, if you look at the institutions, there was like five or six of them that already voted for and they came public with it. Like I mentioned earlier, the ones who aren't voicing it are most likely voting for it, which will have double or triple that number. And, you know, if you add double, at least if you double it to, let's say, 15, 16 percent, it's a pass. It's over 50 percent. Right now, I want to show you guys another calculation that I found very interesting. That's more accurate 
than mine. Mine was just more of a napkin mathy way. Is Josh right here? Shout out to you, my man, for commenting and putting this out there because this was a very detailed way of actually doing it. What he said is that by my calculations, the only way Elon Musk comp package doesn't get approved is if nearly 100% of institutions vote and of those greater than 65% vote no, which is, you know, not realistic. It's most likely gonna be the other way around. But this assumes only a 30% retail turnout. Retail plus employees should both be about 90% yes. I assume employees will be near 100% turnout, which makes sense because if you're an employee of Tesla, why would you be against it? It's not in your benefit to be against it. But he does break it down here in the chart and it makes sense. So retail, 30%, which if you add with employees, it comes to 41%. And to be quite honest, when we look at the ownership of Tesla, it looks like this is more realistic than my own prediction, my own napkin math prediction of 46%, because general public is around 42.6%, while institutions is around 44.4%. And these things change daily, right? And I think by that time, by I think it was April 14th or April 15th. I think these were the right numbers. But nonetheless, we're talking about 1%, 2% here. I don't think it's that much of a big deal. Only that retail investors are voting 90% in the favor. So nonetheless, we have retail 30%, institutions 46%, Elon and Kimball 13%, employees 11%, employees plus retail is 41% of retail. We can just say that retail, but it's good to separate them. Now, I don't know if 11% is actual the numbers of employees of total outstanding shares employees own. I'm not too sure if you guys do know that. Please fact check us or me in the comments below. I'm curious to know what the actual number is, but Josh did say that he has seen this number somewhere and I couldn't find it anywhere. But if that's the case, let's go with it. And this is actually really good news if 11% is the case because now we have more clarity to it. So retail investor, he's saying in scenario one that 45% came out out of the 30% to vote, which is around 13.5%. 85%, not even 90%, 85% voted yes. That's about 11.5%. Institutions, 85% out of the 46% came out to vote. That's a little over 39% that came out to vote. 50% of them voted yes. That's about 20%. Elon and Kimball, they can't vote. Employees, 95%, they all came out to vote, which is about 10.5%. 90% voted yes. 9.4%, 40% plus 63%. Totaling average of 40%. 0.43 percent but pidgey man it's not 50 it's not 50 percent it's 40 percent but here's the thing guys you have to add in the abstains and the ones that voted no so obviously not everyone's going to vote no the only one that's going to vote no if you abstain is the texas one which is a whole lot harder to calculate for elon's compensation if you vote abstain it's abstain so the percentage of failing is a whole lot less with that so that's why this 40.43 percent is actually going to be a whole lot higher which is 64.12 percent for elon's compensation he put here 46.47 i have i mean that he the way he did his calculation not too sure but 64 percent if that's the case so that is a sheesh moment. The second scenario is, again, 45% of 30% retailers. Same percentages of the first one, about 11.5% voted for it. Institutions, 60% of it voted yes, which is 23.46%. First scenario to be more optimistic with it. And it looks like it's, the things are repeating. The institutions that voted in 2018 and the noise and all that, it looks as it's kind of similar. So I, this 60% of them coming out to vote is a realistic scenario, and I do see something like that happening. Employees is the same amount. That's around 44.34% voting. Overall, if you calculate it together, that's 70, over 70% 70 vote. Very, you know, close to what it was in 2018. And with Texas is a little bit over 50%, almost reaching 51% for Texas, which again, this is a tough one because if you abstain or if you don't vote, it's an automatic no, unlike Elon's comp where it'll just be abstained. It'll just be a whole, you know, category for it, which does help for in favor, which is really good. And the last scenario or the bearer scenario you could say here is that he put here 30% came out to vote out of the retail investors, which results to about 9% that vote for yes, which will result in just below 8%. Institutions, all of them come out and 40% vote in favor, which will be 18.4%. And the employees stay the same. That's about 35.5%. If you weigh it, that's over 54% in Elon's compensation package, which is a pass, even in the you know worst case scenario, you could say. 
and for Texas, it's unfortunately not a pass here. But nonetheless, you guys see what's going on here, right? Elon's compensation package is pretty much ratified by. I, I'm, I am certain that it's passed. Even at this moment, it's already passed. Yes, the more vote we can get, it's more towards Texas, more than the Elon compensation, in my opinion, because that is that is the harder one. If you don't vote, again, if you guys haven't voted, man, check out this video here to see how you guys can vote. Because this one is that moving to Texas, we don't have to worry about Delaware in you know in the next future. We don't have to worry about that again with that corrupt judge. We don't have to worry about that ever again. And Texas does favor Tesla. And I mean, Elon did take all his companies away from Delaware. It's just Tesla because it's a public traded company, has different procedures to get there. But I think the push now is to get the Texas over. That's what it is. I think Elon's compensation package is already approved and good to go. But this is one of the best charts that I've seen that illustrates it in a very simple way. And uh, shout out to you, Josh, man. Great work. Now, one thing was interesting is that institutions, he put here 100%. I agree with that. I think every institutions are going to come out and vote. Unlike retail investors where, you know, someone will go like, I don't really care about it. Or, you know, I, I forgot about it. Institutions do have a lot more responsibility. Now, I know there were some fund managers or fund, hedge funds that said we're not going to participate in this, which is just ridiculous. So 85% or even 90% is a realistic number as well to consider and again i'm pretty confident that's already passed and you know any dips i mean today i bought some tesla stock and i'm gonna keep buying more tesla stock let's go Sheesh. so guys don't worry relax thursday is gonna come and we're gonna fr this is gonna end this is gonna end and we can move on to the bigger picture to the you know the robo taxi which is august 8th that's coming the full self driving the new models vehicle models all that good stuff. We can just focus on the fundamentals of the company and not worry about all this noise and drama. God, it's exhausting sometimes to be a Tesla investor. It's like a it's a, it's a different breed, boys and girls. It's just it's it's a sheesh moment being a Tesla investor. It really is. And kudos to you for you know huddling all this time because this thing. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy holding this stock. But here's the thing, guys. I know this thing's gonna get passed. And I know there's going to be a nice roar to the stock. Not financial advice. It could go the other way, right? Depending on the results. But I'm an optimistic and hopeful person. I am. And again, I do think that we're going to see some, you know, good movement to the stock price in two days time, three days time. And here's the thing. I'm going to be going live for this. So let's see what we witness together live. Let's see what's going to happen. I think it's going to be a really interesting shareholder meeting. You guys can follow me. Make sure you guys have notification on when I do go live because it's going to be a sheesh moment. Check it out, guys. Get some merch if you guys want to support the channel and subscribe. And I shall see you guys in the next video. I think there'll be a next video. If not, then I'll see you guys on Thursday live. See ya.